The Steam Next Fest is an event I'm always excited for. Every arbitrary number of months, some unknown times a year, Valve puts together an event with hundreds of demos that last a whole week and expects people to try them all out. You probably won't be able to do that, and that's why you count on me, but I couldn't do it either, so here are the demos that I managed to put together just for your eyes, ears, and any other participating body parts. When I first saw The Wandering Village, I knew I wanted to get up on the back of that dinosaur and build the best dinosaur city you've ever seen. There's not a lot of reasoning for building a city of this nature, but once you're committed, you're in for a ride on the back of that giant beast. You'll have to harvest everything you can from its surprisingly verdant backside to build everything your people need to survive, such as houses, farms, and even kitchens to make delicious soup. Having your home on the move means you might end up in some rough neighborhoods like a desert where your water condensers stop working. But you can always build a giant horn and blast in the ear of your dinosaur to try and convince him to go where you want him to. This was all going pretty well until my lumbering dino island decided to take a nap in a poisonous mushroom cloud causing every inch of his ass to turn into a murderous field of disaster. If you're looking to fight your own murderous field of disaster, you can always head into Scathe, a first-person bullet hell that has you blasting unlimited ammo into infinite hordes of enemies. These include delightful additions like exploding spiders and a refreshing swarm of flying knives. There are so many enemies that in your murderous rampage, you'll have to wipe them off your face at regular intervals so you can still see. Despite the pleasant atmosphere of giant floating metal spike balls, I can't say I'm excited about returning. I died constantly, got stuck on the terrain, had weird sound issues that made me think enemies were always behind me, and I only found one gun. But the full game will have online co-op, so maybe I can convince my friends to carry me through until I can learn to die less. Or I suppose I can take them into another team-based game with Boundary. This game builds off the flop of 2009's Shattered Horizon by making another fully 3D first-person shooter that has you floating around guns blazing in the void of space. Zip around space stations and platforms with six degrees of freedom while you get silently sniped from hundreds of yards away. Or you can squeeze in the narrow hallways and rooms as you hide on the walls, roofs, and anywhere else and rain down grenades and machine gun rounds on anyone that wanders by. Unlock gadgets and the power of space guns to punish those other astronauts for their dreams of heading into the stars. But if you want a more peaceful adventure in the stars, you can try out Ixion. This space city builder has you working in Earth orbit to prepare to colonize another star at the behest of an Elon Musk character that's at least 20% less weird as fuck. You'll have to prepare your ship with all the functions and amenities by collecting resources and building everything on its giant circular platform. Connect piles of junk with tiny roads and enjoy the magic of watching tiny people aimlessly walk around. Of all the demos I played, this one is by far the most polished and feels like it was already complete. Even the title screen and music made me want to buy it a drink and call it the next day. But one demo I might be giving a fake number to is Chains of Fury. This retro first-person shooter has you busting through doors and walls like the Kool-Aid Man and blasting everyone inside. At least on the doors and walls that specifically allow that, and when your foot actually connects with what you're facing. But when you do obliterate some weird alien guy with a flying door, it's pretty entertaining. Yet, after 15 minutes of getting lost in a maze of doors and rooms and shooting more 2D alien clones and weird BDSM pig sprites than I care to comment on, I was ready for a little pacifism. Luckily, World War II Rebuilder was there to let me peacefully head back to the late 1940s and cruise around Europe putting things back together. Here you'll be heading into towns and cities picking up all the rubble and broken shit you could ever imagine and putting them in these color-coded bins. Of course, you'll be doing all the work by hand with some basic tools like a hammer and cutting torch and all by yourself. At least until this random guy shows up out of nowhere and scares you half to death just to stand there and do nothing until you're finished. There are even shadow ghosts hanging out in these destroyed locations to give you some pointless flashbacks on how it all happened. Once you clean up the mess, you get to rebuild it all brick by brick until you either bask in the catharsis or go crazy from the monotony. If you're looking specifically for the monotony, you might want to head into Card Shark. Here you'll take on the role of a mute 18th century servant who gets taken on as an apprentice grifter in the game of cards. You'll learn all the intricacies of card tricks and cheating through the joy of wiggling your mouse around. Engage in the fineries of the Age of Enlightenment by enlightening the coin purses of the rich elite. However, beyond the cool visual style and solid dialogue, it's all just tedious pattern memorization. One demo that didn't give me any pattern to work with is Abris. This game has you solving puzzles, except the puzzles are structures and the solution is destroying them. 
You're given a collection of pieces, including things like rigid structure, connectors, rotating pieces, as well as destructive triggers like lasers, bombs, and even a gun. Then you can use all of your creativity to create something masterful and unique or just whatever gets the job done because your imagination is broken like mine. Build things to break things. Another game primarily about breaking things is Trail Out. This title doesn't make any sense, nor does the story or the dialogue or the characters or any aspect of it that isn't driving a car. I'm actually about 90% sure this is just Wreckfest with a layer of weird extra shit thrown on top of it. It even has some of the worst voice acting I've ever let infest my eardrums. I'm a fat bitch. Hi, Michalic. We are ready to go. I got the car and I'm ready to work. But one thing it does have is some pretty fun racing. Maybe enough to get 75,000 funds. While I may not have found quite that many funds in Turbo Overkill, I did find the one I needed, and it only required a chainsaw leg. This cyberpunk boomer shooter has you moving around like a well-lubricated laser beam as you blast through dozens of enemies with a nice variety of weapons and alternate abilities. Every enemy you shred into the juiciest giblets will also rain cash that you can use at vending machines for cyberpunk augmentation goodies. As you blaze through the game, knee sliding your chainsaw leg through the hordes and using double jumps and dashes, the neon glow of this slightly pixelated world will be a blur of carnage and glory that not even Doom Eternal could keep up with. If you want to slow things down a bit and maybe try some different guns, check out You're a Gun. You're not actually a gun in this game, but that's 90% of the reason I chose to play it. You are, however, a mech fighting against swarms of robots with Gatling guns, rocket launchers, and explosive abilities. Really, it's everything you need to pretend that you're a gun. One demo you can check out where you don't need any guns at all is Little Orpheus. From a studio well known for walking simulators comes a game that has all the dialogue of a walking simulator, but now you get to jump in the process. Here you'll take on the role of what is basically Goofy, but if he was from the Soviet Union and looked like Leisure Suit Larry. This walking pratfall stowed away on a Soviet rocket drill and ended up in the Jules Vernian prehistoric universe filled with gigantic flora and fauna including a Tyrannosaurus Rex. This antagonistic MacGuffin will chase you through the seemingly endless vaults and swings of platforming in a colorful world of things we've all seen before. One game does bring back something we've seen before, but it's something I'm happy to see again. If you were a fan of Pikmin but wanted it to have more open-world platforming and 2D sprite characters, well then someone made Tinykin specifically for you. Take on the role of some kind of bowl-cut wielding alien exploring the universe and get stuck in a gigantic house where bugs are your friends. Collect randomly placed creatures from eggs called Tinykin who will follow you everywhere you go as you hurl them around and force them to carry things for you. All while you solve puzzles, unlock the world and its household junk, and rebuild some sort of device that will get you back into space where you belong. You can even collect these things that I thought were popcorn the whole time but are actually pollen. I'm still going to pretend they were popcorn though. Going from the world of tiny things to the world of extremely large things, it's time for Gigabash. This game is basically War of the Monsters with a dash of Smash and a pinch of Rampage. Pick from a collection of kaiju, mecha, or a slightly chubby Ultraman to battle it out across several destructible maps. You can pick up buildings and heave them at your enemies or just blast one another with charged up melee and ranged attacks. There's even a power-up to enhance your gigantification and become massively overpowered to relentlessly fuck up your enemies. This one will probably be a lot better when I'm not exclusively playing against people 7,000 miles away. If you can't make friends to fight with, you might want to check out The Unliving and raise your own from the dead. This 2D Overlord style game has you rampaging through villages, murdering pitchfork and bow wielding innocents and turning them into reanimated rotting corpses. Wander aimlessly around farms and houses getting upgrades and dying religiously when enemies randomly lob giant arrows at your face while your mobs of undead reflect on their existence through terrible AI. But then you get to explore this strange shadow-filled crypt thing before you start it all over. Roguelikes really know how to treat you right. Well, that's all for the demos I played in the Steam Next Fest, at least the ones that didn't bug out and crash. There were some that certainly surprised me, while others were pretty disappointing. Some left me so thoroughly whelmed that I almost forgot that I played them. Whatever the case, I hope you had a chance to dive into the world of upcoming indie and small developer games. If not, I hope this video let you live vicariously through me for the 10 minutes it took to watch. I'm gonna need you to stop that now, but if you do want more hot takes, warm satire, and tepid commentary, make sure to subscribe and check out my other abbreviated reviews.